What is up, people? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So, today I have for you one amazing, beautiful, crazy thing made by the creator of Botania. And it is the game of life. Well, the game of life wasn't created by him. It was, it's an old game that's been around for a long time, and he decided to incorporate it into a way to create mana, which is by far the coolest thing ever. <laughs> so the first thing is I want to show you a little bit about what this game is. The first thing is you need to have the Dandy Life Eon, which is made with a Gaia Spirit, a Rune of Air, a Rune of Earth, a Rune of Fire, a Rune of Water, a Green Petal, a Lime Petal, and two Purple. And this will give you the Dandy Life Eon. And all this is made in Epitola Patekiri. Yeah. This flower doesn't do anything by itself. It needs to have this counterpart, which is a cellular block. And since it's a game, you need a board, which the flower is currently at the middle of the board. The board is a 25 by 25 area, but you can place your cellular blocks, or let's go with players, anywhere on the board. You cannot place it outside the board, but you cannot also place it inside these. The red is where you want your cellular blocks to be when they're going to enter the green area. In the green area, it's going to tell the flower, grab everything that's in the red and make mana out of it. So this is a little bit more complex than that. But this is why I want to explain it. So let's say we have this shape around here. Okay, We made something like this. And when it gets over there, it's going to give us mana. But Pyramid, like, as soon as it's going to tick, let's, let's show you one tick, when you place redstone, it's going to start and it's going to move. So it's going to do stuff. So let's say this would touch there. What would that mean and how would the mana be calculated? I can't exactly be sure on how uh, it was created for Botania, but I can explain to you how the game of life works. Uh, we're going to go back to the simple design simply because there's less blocks to think about. All right. So if you look at this, what you can say is that this block is touching two other block. So that means that this block is worth two points. This one here is worth three because it's touching three blocks. This one here is the most valuable because it's touching four. And also, you might think, all right, that's cool, that's easy to know. But what you want to know is that actually this block here, this block there, 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 there here and here are also calculable. So this one is worth one, this one is worth two, this one is worth four, and you can continue. So in the game, that would be how you would calculate points. I do know that in Botania, it counts also as the number of blocks that you have moved, the number of time that this block has moved to reach this middle part. So for an example, one of the best way to actually grab to actually have let me do a little bit of this to show you. The best way to actually get some mana has been found to be uh, something called... I don't actually remember the name, but it's that shape. What it does is it goes from the corner to the middle in a straight line. As like that. This game only starts when the flower has redstone, by the way. It's a really important. So as you can see, it started here. It's going to go in the middle, and it's going to actually have three blocks touching when it's going to go in. Just like so. And this gave us a little bit of mana. You can also uh, find other things. But one thing you need to remember is when you have the block of redstone, you cannot place a cellular block. The cellular block also cannot be broken and gotten back. You can't get them back. When you break them, they just disappear. I'm in creative mode, but it does the same thing in survival. Alright, so for me, my big goal was to try to find a way to automate this in the best possible way using the less possible block 
in the fastest possible time. Which may sound like a lot of variables, but there's a lot of way to find out how to do this. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm actually not going to use the whole board. At the third block from the side, I'm going to place a border so that the cylinder block cannot pass and go that way. That means that when the blocks are going to get a movement, if they try to go this way, they're simply going to stay to the block they're currently on, which is going to make that the reaction of the cylinder block is going to be different than the one that you just saw that goes straight, because the detail that I found is in the same. There is a couple of things that you might want to know also on the cylinder blocks. You could, if you wanted not to automate this pattern, and it would still be okay. But let's say we go like this. All right, this is simple. This is a simple little design. And if we power it, it's going to go to a stale. It's going to start doing this, and then it's just going to start doing that. And it's never going to move. On your end, what you could do is propulse it by just giving it something so that it starts moving again if you don't automate it. But if you automate it, you don't want it to do something like that. Just stop. And there you go. So the one that I found only uses four cylinder block and creates more mana than the, the one that comes all the way from the corner. And what I found is that when you put one, it doesn't work. But when you put two, it works. But it works even better with three. But why not putting four? You know, you have four corners. So when you place this in the four corners, let me show you what it does. We'll, we'll place that there and we'll see. Well, actually, we're going to grab a diluted mana pool because we're going to be able to see really what happens. And let me toggle down. Fall. All right. So let's power that. You're going to see it does a pretty cool design. I love what it does. So it starts by doing this thing on the side. But since it can go to the side, it's going to propagate to the middle. And then they're going to meet and they're going to go crazy and do a crazy design. And eventually they're all going to form into the middle and it's going to give a crazy amount of mana. Almost a full diluted mana pool, which is more than this. The, the thing that comes from the corner directly to the middle gives you that amount of mana in about 22 seconds. This one does it in 20. So this gives you more mana, uses less space, is faster, and looks a lot cooler, which is the most important thing of them all. <laughs> so yeah, guys, I'm actually going to show you how to automate it, because there is a way to automate it, which doesn't take that much space either. So we're going to get rid of these things. And you're going to need a couple of things for that. You're going some repeaters, the corporea funnels. So I'm going to put it here just to show you it's the block. The corporea funnels are droppers and corporea sparks, and the corporea sparks are in their bottles, pixie dust, and sparks. You're also going to need a master corporea spark, like so. Just a dragon stone with a corporea spark. You're going to need piston, redstone block to power. You're going to need an item frame, some cellular block. And an overing hourglass, some sand, 21 to be more precise, two chests, and one flow, uh, two, four floating, four floating running carpus. And yeah, to make the, the floating running carpus, uh, if you click, you're never going to be able to make a floating running carpus. Uh, but if you go in floating, you're going to be able to make floating white flower. And with the floating white flower, you just need to put the floating white flower with the running carpus, and it is going to give you the floating running carpus. There's just no recipe. But all right, so you're going to need any block that you want, and you're going to want to do a platform the same size of the red, uh, the red in the middle. Uh, by the way, this doesn't need to be red or green. You can put it the color that you want. It was just to show you where the blocks are going to stop. You're going to want to put a 
all in the middle because this is where the block of redstone is going to go. All right. So then we're going to place our piston that is going to go right over here. Like so. And then you can remove this block. Like so. All right. So this thing is going to be pretty much what's going to power the game. And it's also going to, you know, regulate the things that we put around. Okay, so the next thing you're going to need is any block. I use purple pedal blocks, which are just pedals, to mark where I'm going to place the blocks. So in this corner, they're going to go here, like so. Uh, as you can see, I'm rotating them every corner so they point towards the next corner. Uh, it's the way I do it. I don't know if it changes anything, uh, but as I found out, it gives a lot of mana. So... I didn't want to play with it. It's just the best way that I found to make this. All right. And what is important is that the block that you just placed in the corner is the same one that you place in this corner. Oops. There we go. Okay. So then we're going to start playing a little bit with uh, this piston over here because we want it to work. Uh, kind of important. <laughs> so... To make sure that you place the things at the right place, we're actually going to start by placing this guy here. We're going to place a mana pool right here. Then if you want to get the mana, you can get it from here. But again, it's a little bit tricky. I would probably try to get it from another way. Uh, probably, let's say... I would make like a mana distributor and put two because you need a mana pool here with mana. It is really important that you have one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a mana tablet and I'm going to throw it in there just so it gets a little bit of mana. The reason for this is because the floating run and carpets that you're going to place need mana to work. As you can see, it just did some animation because it grabbed a little bit of mana. When they don't have mana around it, they can move, they can put blocks up to four blocks away. When they have mana, they can go eight block, which is the limit currently doing this. So you're going to place one in each corner, like so. Next thing, you're going to break this one and this one. And you're going to place your corpora, corporea funnels right over there, like this. So this is where your items are going to be ejected so that the flowers can grab them. If you didn't know, the corporate funnels actually push items away when they, uh, when they receive redstone. They do that based on what they have in an item frame in front of them. What you're going to want to do on both of them, you're going to want to place this item and you're going to click it, right click it three times. Because when you don't click it, you get one item, when you click it once, you get two, when you click it three time, uh, two times, you get four, when you click it three times, you get eight. Yeah, so it should look like this. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I can click, like so. One, two, three. So this is going to output eight, which, as you can probably determine, these guys are going to pick and place in the corner. Okay. The next thing is, you're going to want to get some redstone here and there, and one on top of this one. Then you're going to keep, take the one repeater, and you're going to place it right there. Uh, this is because we can't have a block actually, a piece of redstone, because we're going to use another repeater right here. Okay, I'm going to use a lapis simply because it's the block I'm going to use. But you're going to be able to see what I'm going to do. Okay, so two blocks right here, just behind this, this, this spreader. Then you're going to put a sticky piston. A block on top can be anything you want. Then you're going to place a block here and a block next to this one. This here, if you don't know, it's to create a one tick pulse. Because I'm showing it to you with an overing hourglass, which doesn't give a one tick pulse. It gives a normal tick. So you're going to place it right here like so, and you're going to place 21 sand into it, which I'm not going to do right now, because this thing would tick every 21 seconds. <laughs> it, 
except we're, we're simply going to just continue our things. Okay, so you're going to want to place your two chests that you got right here. And then you're going to place our previous parts on the chest, on the, the corporea funnel. Uh, you can still click on them if you don't click on the redstone and it's going to place it. And then you're also going to place a master corporea spark right on top here. So this is the system. Literally, this is it. The next thing you just need to do is place your cellular blocks right in here. And when you're going to place your piece of redstone, it's going to output the items. But you don't want to do that first. You could do it, but it might break. The way I found to fix it is to place any types of blocks you want. I like mana glass, so I'm going to place mana glass right around this block so that when it outputs, it's going to output here or there. That's it. It can't go at the bottom. Because if it go at the bottom, it's not going to get picked properly. So you're just going to take some glass, like so, and then the system works. So you're going to go somewhere that you're not going to pick up the blocks. You're going to place your piece of redstone. So there you go. So you saw it just outputs it, and the, the running carpets are going to place the blocks. And for us, we're going to place our 21 sand in the hovering class, and in 21, well, 19 seconds, it's going to flip it, start the game, when it's going to go in the middle, it's not going to work because you didn't link the flower with your Gaia spreader. Oh no! Okay, this. Alright, now it's linked. So currently it wasn't linked, so it wouldn't have worked. But the look of this thing is simply amazing. I love how it plays. It's like crazy long, it does crazy patterns. Then it just outputs your mana. Alright, so as you can see, it didn't do it. It didn't output. So I'm gonna have to... Oops. You point there, and you point there. Okay, now it's working. There we go. Uh, when this thing is going to... There, I'm going to place that there. It might not work. <laughs> Simply because the, the timer started. <clears throat> so in here, as you remember, you have 21 cents. This thing takes 20 seconds. It's just a buffer in case you get a lag and something happens funny. So, yeah. That is the little thing that you do. And I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you guys want to see anything made into a tutorial, you want me to show you how a mod works or something like that, just let me know in the comment section below and I will do it. It will be my pleasure. If actually it makes sense to do it, of course. If you want me to show you how Chisel works, well, that's not a tutorial. <laughs> that's just an answer that I'm going to give you. But yeah, guys. So if you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like. If you really loved it, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.